NVIDIA is adding this to everything. The 5090 and 5080 won't be back in stock for a while. The 5060 and 5060 Ti get a release, and AMD is launching a ton of products when... Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, I recently went over the fact that NVIDIA added a very interesting new tech to their most recent driver update that was made to also add support for their next-gen RTX 5000 cards. It's called NVIDIA Smooth Motion, and it essentially adds a driver-level frame generation, meaning NVIDIA is adding frame gen to essentially everything. But like I originally went over with that, it's only supported on their newest RTX 5000 cards. Luckily, I have a big update on that because according to an NVIDIA rep, support for the GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs will be coming in a future update. And that's obviously great news for anyone who purchased one of their current gen cards. Now, I will say that an NVIDIA rep does mention that you can see right here that it's not gonna be as good as regular frame generation or multi-frame generation, but obviously it should be a nice option for games that don't support those. With that said, all of this may sound very familiar to AMD's fluid motion frames given it's also a driver level frame generation tech. But it's almost certainly not a coincidence that AMD's tech is also supported on their RX 6000 and 7000 series cards. Though, of course, it's also supported on their iGPUs, but Nvidia doesn't have many products that fall under that category. So I would argue that this is almost certainly here and set for support on older models, purely because AMD does the same. Don't forget that competition is unbelievably important. Basically, as long as AMD can stick around, we have hope. And that's an example of a conditional loop, which is something you'll learn in Brilliant's awesome programming course. In fact, they have a ton of courses on computer science. And while they sponsored today's video, I seriously can't recommend them enough. Brilliant doesn't just teach you with someone talking about a topic in a video or anything like that. Instead, they use these engaging puzzles to get you to actually do it yourself, because they know that the hands-on approach is the best way to get you to learn. Another thing I love about Brilliant's online courses is that each one only takes a few minutes to get through, so you can whip out your phone to quickly learn something and then go about your day. Just make a habit of it and you can master anything. But the best part is that you can try it yourself with a free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Plus, when you use Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, you'll get 20% off their annual premium. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. And next up for today, as many of you know, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 and 5080 GPUs have been nowhere to be found. Luckily, it looks like we now have an update that will at least give us an idea of when they could be back in stock. Though, this one actually does come from the UK, but hopefully it gives us a decent idea of when it'll also be in stock in the US and elsewhere. Either way, as you can see right here, this is a stock update from Overclockers UK, and they go over the ETAs. First, for the RTX 5090, we're looking at between 3 and 16 weeks. And of course, that's a pretty big gap that we're talking about here, but I would definitely not get too excited about it actually being here within three weeks. This is likely an absolute best case scenario. If anything, I would look much closer to that 16 weeks. Then when it comes to the RTX 5080, we're looking at between two and six weeks. And once again here, I wouldn't get my hopes up too high for it being back in stock in just a couple weeks. I would definitely aim more for the six week mark. Don't get me wrong, I don't have any insight into this or anything like that, but given when stock went out with last gen and things like that, it definitely took quite a while and I wouldn't be too surprised if it's way closer to 16 weeks for the 5090 and then of course six weeks for the 5080. Either way, it does look like you won't have to wait too long for their RTX 5080, but of course, it's definitely not a GPU that was very well received. If you are waiting for the 5090, it does look like it really may be quite a while. 
Luckily, it doesn't look like it's going to be too long before you can get NVIDIA's RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti. As you can see right down here, we have a slide from Chaintech. And for those who don't know, Chaintech is a Taiwanese hardware manufacturer. And actually, one of their partners is Colorful who, as you can see, is one of the largest GPU makers and highly visible in the South Asian and Chinese markets. Basically, if anyone would know, other than NVIDIA, of course, it would likely be them. And when we look at what this actually says, you can see it originally says NVIDIA will launch new RTX 50 series products in early 2025. And then it lists them. We had the 5090D and 5080 in January, and then the 5070 and 5070 Ti in February. And then, as you can see right here, the RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti are apparently set for launch, if this is correct, in March. And that's not the only thing releasing in March. Because, as you can see right here, we have uh, some new information from the French publication Cal Cotland. As you can see, it says, regarding pricing, we have no new information. This is in regards to AMD's upcoming products, but they say, however, our sources indicate that AMD's two new X3D models are expected to arrive by the end of March around the same time as the new Radeon RX 9070 and 9070 XT. Basically, we already knew that the 9070 and 9070 XT cards were set for release in March, but if this is right, it sounds like AMD is set to release the mother load, meaning they aren't just releasing new GPUs, looks like they could also be releasing new gaming CPUs, i.e. the 9950X 3D and 9900X 3D. You can see these right here. Of course, they already did state that they were set for release in Q1 of this year, but this obviously gives us a much more specific date. And don't forget when it comes to those CPUs, the 9950X3D is a 16 core 32 thread part. Then the 9900X3D is a 12 core 24 thread part. Obviously we knew that, but the 9950X3D comes with a maximum boost of 5.7 gigahertz a whopping 144 megabytes of cache and 170 watt TDP. Then the 9900X3D comes with up to a 5.5 gigahertz max boost with 140 megabytes cache and 120 watt TDP. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's higher end X3D parts or are you more excited for their RX 9000 cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant at Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. And as always, have a great day.